If you live in a place where internet is plentiful and the megabits flow freely, then this might not be the video for you. Feel free to click away and instantly start watching something else. But if the thought of abandoning this stream and waiting for another video to load fills you with dread, then stay tuned. Because I feel your pain. I live in Australia, a land of sunshine, beaches and kangaroos, where corporate apathy and government ineptitude have left us with a woefully inadequate broadband infrastructure. This video was uploaded in 4K, but I watch most things back in 480p. The government here is rolling out a brand new broadband network, but until that reaches my area and my internet is upgraded from absolutely terrible to woefully inadequate and already out of date, I'm stuck waiting on the little spinny thing. I'm not actually sure what it's called, but I know what it represents. Frustration for millions of internet users worldwide who, like me, waste away their finite lives waiting for video to finally load. We never used to have this problem. Back in the day before cord cutting and streaming services, television just worked. You'd tune in to the channel you wanted to watch and the picture would instantly appear in glorious living colour. And most importantly, your show wouldn't just stop 15 minutes in right at the good part with a little spinny thing while it tried to buffer the rest of the program. I mean, we had this sorted in the 50s. Netflix employs thousands of people. Can none of them get this right? Sorry. But the good news is we've finally landed on the point. What exactly is buffering? Why does it happen? And why doesn't television need to do it while YouTube videos and streaming sites do? You can think of the internet as a series of hot dogs. I mean, not really, but it'll do. The video you're watching now starts its life as a big long stream of information held on a server at YouTube. Actually, it's held on hundreds of different servers all around the world, but we'll just ignore all that for now. When you want to watch the video, your computer sends a request to YouTube's server, and they start sending you back video in little hot doggy chunks called packets. Pretty much everything online is done in packets. Your request to YouTube is sent in packets, your email is received in packets, and a third example. There are other channels better suited to explaining this, so we'll just stick to the hot dogs. Each hot dog represents a small part of a larger piece of information. In our case, this video, and all is well. Hot dogs arrive, you eat them, easy done. The internet is complex. Not every hot dog travels the same path, so some arrive late or out of order, or not at all. Oh dear. What we need is a buffer. Let's set aside a bit of the table, ask for a video, and then let the table fill up with hot dogs before we start eating them. Now, if they arrive late or out of order, we can rearrange them on the table before we have to start eating them. Or if one goes missing, we can ask for it again. And if there's a slowdown in the kitchen, our little stockpile of hot dogs can pick up the slack. On YouTube, you can watch this happen in real time. The red line shows where we're at in the video, and the light grey section is our buffer. You can watch it getting consumed and then filling back up just in time. And this is where my life falls apart. Video takes a lot of hot dogs, and sometimes my internet just can't get them to me in time. The buffer runs out, and it has to fill up again before the video can continue. So that's streaming, but what's different about TV? Why doesn't it buffer? Well, television doesn't use packets, and unlike streaming, there's not a different signal for each viewer. You just turn on the TV and pick up whatever the station happens to be broadcasting at that time. It's a single continuous signal that takes a direct path from the transmission tower to your aerial, so nothing ever arrives late or out of order. Television is just invisible, infinitely long hot dogs flying around us all the time, and all you need to do is open your mouth to eat. Of course, this has its downsides. If you miss some of the signal, you don't get to ask for it again, you just get a drop out in the picture. And if you're not tuned in at the right time, well, you just miss the show. But it means the TV doesn't need to buffer the signal. It goes straight from the antenna to your display. Except it's not quite that simple. Analog television worked like that. Your TV was driven directly by the signal sent over the air. But that all changed when we switched to digital. There are a number of digital television standards around the world, but pretty much all of them are built upon a format called the MPEG transport stream. And the MPEG transport stream is made up of packets. 
These packets are much smaller than those used online, each containing only a fraction of a frame, but they do allow for some handy features. The first is the ability for a TV station to interleave packets from different video streams, allowing them to broadcast multiple channels on the same frequency. Your TV just pays attention to the packets for the channel you're watching and ignores the rest. That's how one TV station can have multiple channels. The other is error correction. The stream has a level of redundancy built in, so if the signal is dropped and a packet's lost, the TV can reconstruct it from information contained in other packets. That's why you don't get snow with digital TV, and your reception has to get pretty bad before the picture starts breaking up. However, both of these rely on your TV being able to collect a number of packets before reconstructing them into a video signal that it then displays. Your digital TV has a buffer. It works differently from the buffer on YouTube, but it has the same function. It's a spot to hold data before it's displayed. And you can see it in action. An analogue TV switches channels pretty much instantly, but a digital TV will hesitate for just a second when you switch stations. The TV needs to collect enough packets to construct the first frame of video before it can show it to you. The little pause when you change channels on a digital TV is that TV buffering. The buffering problem in general is going away. People are getting faster internet and adaptive streaming means that the amount of data sent can be adjusted in real time based on the quality of your connection. Eventually we'll all be able to stream 8K video effortlessly. And while the buffer will still be there in the background, silently fixing errors and absorbing speed bumps, interruptions from the little spinny thing will be confined to the history books. Thanks for watching. I'd like to thank my friend Morgan for coming on down and eating more than his fair share of hot dogs. Uh, you can see more of his stuff at www.spikytrap.com. I would also like to point out that at no point during this video did I freeze frame and put a spinner on the screen in order to try and fake you out. So I think that at least deserves a like. If you agree, please do so down below. Subscribe and I'll see you again soon.